From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And good morning. You know, it seems like only yesterday that Bill King and Sylvester Turner were locked in a close race and runoff for mayor of the city of Houston, a race that Turner eventually won by a close margin. That election was more than three years ago, and now Bill King has decided to give it another try. He's with me this morning to talk about it. Good morning to you, Bill. Hey, Campbell, how you doing? It's always good to see you. Great Let to be me back with you. I know that there are several reasons for this, but if you could narrow it down to maybe one about why you decided to run for mayor again. Well, you know, the last time I ran, we talked about the, the, the problems the city was facing. Mm -hmm. And I don't see things getting any better. I don't see the streets have gotten any better. We're still spending half the drainage fee on things other than drainage. Uh, police department's still only solving, you know, 5% of the, of the burglaries are committed in the city. Uh, look, I, I wish Sylvester had been a successful mayor. I've known him for a long time. Uh, and I wish for his sake and for the city's sake, he had been, but that's not been the case. Oh, it was a close loss last time, really close. How much do you think your thinking was involved when you say, oh, missed it by that much? How much did that play a role in you deciding to do this? It was uh, 3,989 votes, more or less. <laughs> um, well, certainly, it, it indicated that we had a lot of support last time. When I talked to the folks who supported us last time, I don't find that many people have changed their minds. Mm -hmm. I think that we bring us perspective that needs to be heard in the city, and, and I think those people need to have a voice. Was there a big mistake that uh, your campaign made last time around that m made you not be able to win? And if so, what is it that you'll do to try to make sure that doesn't happen I, I again? I think there were two things that we did last time that were mistakes. Uh, one is we just didn't do as good a job getting our folks back to the polls uh, in the runoff as, as Sylvester did. And, and look, you know, if you recall, when I got in the race, I think I was... Uh, I had 2% of the vote, and I was in eighth place, the first poll that came out. So it wasn't until really about the 1st of October that it became clear that we were probably going to be in the runoff, and so we sort of were scrambling to come up with a runoff strategy. Mm -hmm. And Sylvester's been doing this for 30 years, uh, and he'd been thinking about it for 30 years, and they frankly just outworked us in the runoff. Uh, that won't happen this time. The second thing is, let me say also, you know, I don't think we did a very good job of reaching out to the African American community last time. As you know, I've got a long history with the African American community in this town. Mickey right. Leland and I were friends, traveled, got people out of prison in, in Cuba. I was on the TSU Board of Regents. And we didn't tell that story last time. Uh, and in some degree, we sort of seeded that vote away. We're not doing that this time. My very first kickoff event was in Sunnyside at the Black Firefighters Union Hall. And I wanted to send a message that we're going to contest for every vote in every precinct and every corner of the city. Given the way that this city tends to vote, are you playing the Howard um, um, Schultz role in this thing? I mean, you know, Howard Schultz, the, the CEO of Starbucks, for those who may not, I know our viewers really are aware of all of this mm -hmm. stuff, but Democrats are saying, why are you doing this? Because if you run, that's going to split the progressive vote, if you will, and that gives Donald Trump a chance to be president again. In this scenario, Tony Busby is running, you're running. Is that going to split up the vote of the people who, unfortunately, in this city, a lot of times tend to vote along racial lines? Well, I, I don't, I, I'm, you know, listen, after the last few years, I've given up predicting how elections are going to come out. Uh, but I think that the, uh, what I'm finding across all communities is I'm hearing exactly the same thing, whether I'm in an African-American or Latino mm -hmm. or in a suburb. Uh, what I'm hearing is the streets are terrible. You know, my home got flooded. What's being done about that? And more recently, my garbage and recycling is not being picked up. Mm. Uh, I called the police, and it took them four hours to get here. You know, look, there are no, there's no such thing as a Republican or a Democrat, a, a black, white, or brown pothole. You right. know, it affects everybody. Everybody was flooded in Harvey. This was an equal opportunity right. uh, disaster. I think people are more concerned about the issues that affect us locally here than they are some of these other issues. Well, one of the big challenges the last time around, you well remember that as you and Sylvester and other candidates were standing, you and the mayor were standing on the podium, um, the pension reform. And um, this time around, it was a big challenge, and it was a hurdle that the mayor will say that he was able to take care of successfully. Um, do you agree that that was done correctly? And if n not, why not? No, absolutely not. You know, we're still in defined benefit pension plans, which is the root of the problem. Our pension expense last year, we just had an audit. It was just released by the city in the last couple of months here. The pension expense today is higher than it's ever been before in the history of the city. Uh, but you, you have to go to define contributions for new employees. But frankly, my big problem with what he did was the way he 
gave us some relief on the problem was that he took away earned benefits. Mm. Now, that's something that he absolutely promised he wasn't going to do, that I promised I wouldn't do, because once somebody has given us their service, we can't go back and change the deal on them. That's not right. And that's exactly what his pension reform, that's how he bought us a little bit of relief. So I don't believe in doing that. It, you know, as you look at all of this and you're able to sit back seat, if you will, it's a lot easier to kind of figure out and take shots here and there. Um, what's been your biggest frustration in the last three years with the kinds of things you've seen coming out of City Hall? You've, alluded, you've talked about some of them, but what, what, what kind of overrides all of that? I'm, I'm gonna tell you the thing that, uh, I, that has bothered me the most, and frankly the thing that made, was, the, was the catalyst for me to make the decision, is the corruption. Uh, I've never seen a City Hall as corrupt as this one is. Corrupt meaning? Well, like for example, the contract that he gave his ex-partner for $6.7 million that came out of HUD money that was intended for flood relief. And look, I used to be in that business. That contract should, if you had bid it out, it would have gone for about a million and a half or so. Mm. And by the way, that's what the, that's what the prime contractor estimated the cost to be. And, and the proposal went through the housing committee at, at, at city council at 1.5 and it suddenly shows up on the agenda at 6.7. So we have a $6.7 million contract, four times what the prime contractor estimated out of all the lawyers and title companies, it just happens to go to Sylvester's ex-partner. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Have you, uh, have you uh, uh, talked to him about that or mentioned, have you seen any response to him about how that happened? No, what I've, his response is? I've, I've raised it. It was raised by the media. He's been specifically asked about it in press conferences, and he refuses to address it. But it's something we're going to talk about throughout this campaign. And that's only one example, by the way. But we'll talk about another one after this. We're going to stick around. He's sticking around for another segment. We'll talk about your strategy, um, what you're preparing to do to take on however many contenders they end up being. We know that there are at least three at this point, you may know more. Yeah, there's actually more. Yeah. Okay. I, I knew that. I knew you'd have an answer to that. <laughs> and his evaluation of how the mayor did and how he plans to prepare Houston for the next natural disaster. That's next when Houston Newsmakers continues.